Hello everyone, this is Mario. Welcome to the third stage of La Vuelta 2019 in Pro Cycling Manager. So after a slight disappointment in the second stage of La Vuelta, where I intended to win it with uh, Alejandro Valverde, we are now coming to the third stage, which is the first one suited for sprinters. They are going to be the favorites for this one, but of course, with that slight bump near the end of the stage, I am going to try to do something with Alejandro Valverde, and if I cannot win the stage, at least I want to take as many points as possible for the green jersey. The top favorites today are of course Sam Bennett and Fernando Gaviria, and it's going to be near impossible to beat them in a mass sprint. So the riders are today having 183 kilometers between Ibi and Alicante. The stage is mostly flat, but as most of the stages in La Vuelta, there are some irregularities in the terrain. So I may actually try to force the pace uh, in the category three climbs uh, closer to the end of the stage so that I can eventually try to leave the sprinters behind. I don't really think I'm going to be able to do that, but I may try it anyway. So today we have a six riders breakaway group. They are currently with four and a half minutes lead over the peloton. And in this group we have Harm Van Hoek, Cyril Bart, um, Christian Rodriguez, Roman Segle, Steph Kras and Thomas Marczynski. So the breakaway is now approaching the intermediate sprint. It looks like Thomas Marczynski is going to try to take the points here. He's followed by Steph Kras, but Marczynski is the first one in the intermediate sprint. And so with still over 70 kilometers to go in the stage, the breakaway riders are now starting the ascension to Puerto de Villar. It's a category three climb, only three, two and one points available in this one. And we have Roman Segle attacking for the KOM points here. He's being followed by everyone else except Harm Van Hoek. He cannot follow the pace of the other riders. Segle is apparently not going to take the points as well. Is it going to be Cyril Bart taking the three points in this one, followed by Thomas Marczynski and um, Christian Rodriguez in third? So we are now about 50 kilometers from the finish line. And I think I'm going to try to force the pace a bit um, in the front of the peloton so that I can eventually try to leave some of the sprinters behind. I have all my other riders, um, well, they were in a good position, but Valverde and Quintana are now being dropped a bit. Let's put them back in the front of the peloton. I want to drop riders, but of course not mine. So let's see if I can get them back to the front. I have Nelson Oliveira and Antonio Pedrero uh, pacing at the front. Let's see how this works out. And so by forcing the pace, I'm almost catching the riders in the breakaway. They are probably still going to take the points for the mountain here. Let's see how this goes. And Pedrero and Oliveira are really forcing the pace here. Let's see how this goes for my other riders. It's looking quite good, actually. And in the front, it's going to be Cyril Bart taking the three points here, followed by Christian Rodriguez and uh, Thomas Marczynski, I think. Angel Madrazo will still be leaving the mountain classification after this stage. And can I create some gaps here? I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, the peloton is really stretched, but um, no gaps are being created so this didn't really work out so we are now 15 kilometers from the finish line the peloton is still is still quite stretched um, but i didn't really manage to create uh, some gaps i'm trying to go now with mark soler pacing but other teams are pacing even harder so let's see 13 kilometers to go still almost a minute to the breakaway riders so i don't really know if we are going to catch them or not before the finish line. So eight kilometers to go now. I'm having a small sprint train for Valverde. Let's see if this actually works or not. Um, I will soon start pacing with uh, Marc Soler. Let's do it now and try to do something in the end with um, Alejandro Valverde. He's going to be on the wheel of Jose Joaquin Rojas. He's going to launch the sprint for uh, Valverde. I hope I can do a bit better than in the previous one. We are catching up the breakaway riders. 
Let's increase the pace with Mark Soler now in this little bump here. Let's try to then go all out with Jose Joaquin Rojas. Maybe I can leave some of the other sprinters behind. Let's go with Rojas now. Who else is here? Fernando Gaviria was being pulled by Pogacar, which is kind of surprising. Gaviria is going to put himself on the wheel of Valverde, I think. Let's start sprinting with Rojas now. And now let's go with Alejandro Valverde. This is a slight downhill. Can I take the win? I won't take it with Valverde. Who is going to win this? It's a win for Gaviria, ahead of Maximiliano Ricciese, John Degenkolb, Clement Venturini, and Alejandro Valverde is fifth in the stage. But this was a really close one. And here is the replay of the final sprint. Valverde was looking good, but he wasn't strong enough to beat uh, Fernando Gaviria. He's clearly uh, stronger than Valverde in this type of finishes. I could have taken a bit more advantage of the downhill, but I sprinted too late and Valverde was only fifth. So Fernando Gaviria takes his first win in La Vuelta 2019, the first one for UAE, of course, as well. And I got fifth with Alejandro Valverde. It's not a bad result. In the GC, David de la Cruz maintains the lead with the same time as uh, several of his teammates. Angel Madrazo is still the best climber in the race. In the points classification, Dylan Tunes is still ahead of Fernando Gaviria, although both have 25 points. Taugo Gennard keeps the lead in the Young Rider classification. And the same for Team Ineos, who is the best in this race so far. So I tried to force the pace a bit to drop some of the sprinters. I couldn't really do that uh, to full effect. Although um, Sam Bennett did get a really poor result. He was only 40 seconds in this stage. So I guess that maybe the pace did something to him. Also, another rider who dropped uh, from the group was Max Walscheid. So he wasn't able to contend for the stage win. But in the end, I got fifth with Alejandro Valverde. It's not a bad result. Um, he gets a few points for the green jersey. So yeah, things are starting to look a bit better for him after uh, the fall in the second stage. So as there were no changes in any of the classifications after this stage, let's look at stage four. It's going to link Culera to El Puig, 169.8 kilometers. It's a flat stage. There is a single hill in the race, a category three hill, not really steep. It has a max of 8.9%, but it's still um, almost, well, more than 40 kilometers away from the finish line. So I'm pretty sure that the sprinters will be the absolute favorites for this one. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this stage. I didn't get the win with Alejandro Valverde, but in this one, it would be really complicated to do so. But even though if you have enjoyed this stage, please click the like button. Also, please comment below. Tell me where you think I failed on the final sprint. I would really love to hear your opinion. And if you're new to my channel, please check some of my other videos. And if you enjoy them, consider subscribing to my channel. I would really appreciate your support. And I hope to see you all next time for stage 4 of La Vuelta 2019 in Pro Cycling Manager. Bye!